the acquisition of military tech, obviously um, we're privileged to stand his sire in South Africa, but yes. we'd love to know how you got him. Okay, well, every year, George, George, my son, and Gary, my brother, we, we always attend Royal Ascot. We, do, we take a lot of notes uh, with respect to horses that we think may go on the market in time, may come on the market in time. So um, um, a few years back, we were at Royal Ascot, and we, we, we caught you know, this um, military attack, or rave it was called in England, caught our eye, and um, we asked the agent, Alistair Donald, to uh, track the horse down, speak to John Hills, and just see whether he could, we could get him on the market. That we did. We bought him for quite good money. Of course, he was a, a late acclimatising horse. He, he, he just didn't come to hand like that. A little bit disappointing when he first arrived, but, you know, I believe that I've got a knack of of, of, of getting them you know to a stage where they can where they can win races that is being patient if it, you, the bullet the bullet gate attitude with European horses coming into like Hong Kong doesn't work you just lose them and they, they never reach their full potential but um, with my staff behind me and and the jocks who ride for me we've managed to be patient and and uh, military attacks was one of those and look where he is today I've got to say that he's right up in the same league as Vengeance of Rain, Oriental Express, Viva Pataka, that caliber horse. No, he is. You know, I think he's the real deal. Um, of course, he's six year old, rising yeah. six. You know what I mean? And there's a little bit of wear and tear around the uh, the bod now, but um, um, you know, it, it's great that we have the real deal. It's great that we're invited to participate in in the greatest race meeting on the planet. You know, in uh, in the Middle East here. So from that point of view, I'm a very lucky man, and um, I think there's a there's a year or two left in him um, yet, and uh, I think he can keep producing the goods. The surface that you have in Hong Kong, I know that there's probably no harder working track man in the whole wide world, um, and of course your grass is spectacular, but this particular surface, how's he taken to it? Okay, well you know in Hong Kong we work on dirt every morning, yes. and there's, it's a little bit of depth to it and whatever. It's nurtured by uh, one of D. Wayne Lucas's ex um, track men, he, which he does a fantastic job. So considering that they work on it every morning, and then they come to Tapita here, and they don't get into this, you know what I mean? They bounce off it. It's, yes. it's, a, it's a real cushion-like uh, effect. Uh, for that point of view, I, all my horses have taken to it, so I don't see military attack having any problem adjusting to that whatsoever, considering that he works on something a lot deeper in Hong Kong. So I heard a trainer, because I sat down with Mike DeCock last Easter sale time, and we had a long chat, and he said, my horses work with no shoes on. So that gives you an idea of the traction issue. You don't want too much traction, otherwise you're going to get soft tissue injuries. Um, but uh, I didn't take the shoes off my other two, that's Sterling City and, and Military Attack, because they're not doing as, you know, much work on this track whatsoever. But uh, Dominant, because of his high suspensory issue, uh, you know, when he's off hind, um, it was necessary that we, we, we get those hind shoes off, and they they were off here and they're off in Hong Kong. But um, getting back to, uh, the, to, to Peter, as I said, the three of them, not a problem. Oh, but, um, you know, dominant, of course, he's yes. on that fabulous turf out there. Yes. It's actually a better surface than Hong Kong, believe me, um, because that, that's you know, something. They trial on it like they do in Hong Kong and it doesn't suffer the, you know, all the, the traffic over it and all the trials. So um, from that point of view, this surface is fantastic. Okay, let's just touch on military attack himself now. Um, Obviously the journey is a well-travelled one and it's a well-tested one. How did he take it? Well, there's certain horses, you know, that don't travel. I brought Dim Sum here, you know, uh, two or three years back and he didn't travel at all and he ran very poorly. Um, but we all know that military attacks already competed in Singapore, won very well, could have broke the rack, track record with a slap around his rear. Um, as far as I'm concerned, travelled um, fantastic. Um, as I said, the weight gain um, and the fact that, as I said earlier on, he's kicking his brand off, going off the track, um, I couldn't be happier. So from the point of view of travelling, hasn't been a problem with him. Walking towards the track over here this morning, I bumped into a good old friend, Mark Player, I said yes. to him, how your team? He says, well, it's a case of whether they're good enough. Is he good enough? No, he's definitely good enough. Um, as I said, there, there might be horses better than him, but we've got the mileage into their legs. We've got fit horses. The European horses are all got a question mark against them. So from that point of view, they might be better, you know, after they get fit. But on this, on the, you know, this meet on Saturday, we've got fit horses, and I think Hong Kong's going to do very, very well. We're going to have a few winners. The most remarkable thing for Aventura Stud is to have two representatives on the same night of two of their stallions in military attack and, and, and of course a variety club. It's a remarkable achievement for these people. Oh exactly because you know you, you, you 
I don't know, I haven't been or gone around your stud farms in South Africa to see where, what level your the business is at, you know what I mean? So I, I really can't comment. All I know is that you've got a nice stallion and oratorio back there, and I think if he, if he clicks with or, you know, with the right mares, then you, you're going to have a lot of fun. But just South Africa, having horses on the world stage here, exactly like Hong Kong, we've only got 12 or 1,300 horses, and look, we've got eight representing the country and, it, well, and invited to come here. This is amazing because we have no industry whatsoever. It's just what we buy offshore or we breed offshore and in, in they come to Hong Kong and look where they are today. Uh, with South Africa, as I said, I, I don't really wish to comment because I don't know too much about the industry. But just having horses invited here and being able to compete at the top and win, like London News in the past in Hong Kong and others, it's, it's just amazing. Well, I'm going to go around with a hat and make a, an official invitation for you to come to Aventure Stud. Pippa will have absolutely no problem with that. And that's an absolutely genuine, sincere invitation. We'd love to see you in South Africa. Well, I'll definitely be over there because I've still got to do the safari parks again. Uh, so while I come over to look at the wild animals, I'll be doing the stud tours.